what a better way to celebrate the new year than talk about the quote first sunrise this is a celebration that is that happens across multiple cultures but we're gonna focus on the inuit today and melina the sun goddess the reason why we're doing this is because after 30 days of what they call polar night meaning 30 days of no sun at all some people some of the inuit people come together and celebrate the first sunrise of the entire year marking the new year now let's get drawing then now who are the inuit the inuit are people that typically live in the arctic or subarctic so that's places like greenland we have arctic canada alaska in the united states and even in some of russia the word Inuit simply means people. There's a lot of different regions and there's a lot of different tr traditions and there's a lot of overlap, but overall we're talking about Inuit as a whole. So some of you might be thinking, well, isn't that actually Eskimo? No. Now many people in parts of the Arctic consider the term Eskimo to be a derogatory term. This is information that was actually really new to me and I'm hoping that this is information that will be helpful for you as well. So we're gonna just progress and just call everything Inuit from now on. Culturally, traditional Inuit life was totally adapted to extreme cold and ice-bound environment. Can you imagine that? That means vegetable foods were hardly available if at all. Most of the primary food sources for the Inuit tended to be sea life. They are avid and expert hunters. They will do it on the ice or in kayaks. Sometimes they use very, very large boats depending on the marine animal. And those large boats are called, I believe, an umiak. So it shouldn't be any surprise that most of their mythology reflects the life of the Inuit people. So we're going to talk about one myth in particular, and that's because we're celebrating the end of the polar night, and that is Melina, the sun goddess. There are actually two parts of this myth, and part one focuses more on the brother. It starts with a grandmother and her grandchildren living in an igloo. That includes a brother and a sister. Now, the brother, who is called Anangat or other names, it depends on the region, but he is entirely blind and ends up kind of being a bit of a burden on the grandmother, especially as the story ends up progressing. In all of the regions, a bear attacks the igloo, grandmother lies to her grandson, forces grandson to live alone, and the sister ends up being the in-between for both of them, but she does help her brother, and the sister's name is Melina in some cases. Eventually, the brother meets a loon, yes, a bird and the bird helps him through this journey and cures his blindness now at the end of the story the grandmother inevitably dies a white whale kills her she drowns and at the very end she's like why <laughs> why are you leaving me so brother and sister are left alone and they know that they have to go find a village to live at because they both need to you know get married and reproduce and have children and keep on with the family whatever Anyway, so that's part one. Kind of the segue into part two is really, really brutal. You can find the whole story in the description down below if you are interested in all of the nitty gritty details. But we're gonna start with part two. Content warning though, this story is really brutal. There are some parts in here that have body mutilation. There is sexual assault in some cases. So beware um, and be careful, take care of yourself. All right, this is how part two begins. In the middle of the night, Melina, the sister, lays in, her woman, in the woman's hut or she is in her own igloo. A man would come and visit her in the very middle of the night to have intercourse with her. But what he would do is he would snuff out her killick lamp and she had no idea who this was. This happened enough times, I'm not, there's no time stamp on it, but this happened enough times where she was like, I need to know who this is. So what she does is she actually uses the soot 
from her lamp and she puts it on her hands, when her secret lover comes into her tent or her igloo, she ends up marking him on his face with her hands. Now he leaves the igloo and she decides that she's going to slowly follow and he leads her to the common tent, the place where they all feast and get together, etc. So she hears in the distance, people are laughing and making fun of somebody and she realizes as she approaches this tent, it's actually her brother. And she sees with further devastation and her heart drops that the soot is indeed on her brother's face. Now, she is incredibly ashamed and devastated and just sick. So this is where things get a little brutal here. What she does is she goes back to her igloo. She grabs a knife and she cuts her breasts off and throws it on the table in front of her brother and proclaims, if you like my body so much, you can just eat it. So she leaves her breast there and she flees the scene, upset as one would be because not only is this whole thing terrible, it's also her brother, the person she supported and helped through blindness. Now, the brother too, seeing her dismay, is following her. She grabs a torch and flees the entire village. She just sprints and runs away. And her brother starts to chase her and follows her, also grabbing a torch. Both are carrying torches, but the brother's torch goes out. And this chase ascends to the heavens where Melina becomes the goddess of the sun and the brother becomes the moon. And that explains why we have different phases of the moon and why it changes because we're seeing the embers of his torch lighting him, but it's not fully immersed in sunlight. And it's actually why the moon has so many spots on it because of the soot left on his face. There's other reasons why Melina is the sun and Anangat is the moon, and there's a bunch of studies about this, especially when it comes to gender studies, but we're not gonna get into that. But there's a lot of interesting information, you can find more about that in the description down below. Like I said, there are different versions of this story. I gave you most of what is pretty much in every single story. There's just some variations, some are more brutal, some are less brutal. Um, keep that in mind, every region is a little different, but the story itself, mostly the same. And you know what else is really interesting? I have two myths that I have done in 2022 that are very similar. One we did not that long ago, and that is actually right here. It's the Korean folktale. We also have another one that has a lot of similarities too, and that is the Kasi sun goddess, which you can find right here. But you know what's even more interesting is our takes and interpretations of the myth. So over on my Discord channel, you can find that in the description down below, there are art challenges and I am so grateful that Anna Sova was able to share her interpretation of the story too. If you want to share your art over on my channel, make sure to join the Discord and I'll do them every single month. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this myth. I hope you found it as intriguing as I did. If you enjoy my art, make sure to follow me on my socials and over here, subscribe, it means the whole world to me, and to join the Discord channel. Honestly, it's gonna be super fun. If you are interested in more myths and videos like this plus art, you can just keep going. There's myths galore. <laughs>